to improve the energy sustainability at Howling Cow um, by decreasing the amount of inefficient energy utilized by the case washing machine. And here's the same link that the water group just showed you of just the cases going through and having the excess water and steam being utilized. So um, why is energy sustainability important? Um, environmental, we need to manage human influence on nature so also social standards of living can be changed. That means happier and healthier communities such as NC State campus um, from less pollution and more profit. Economically, um, we circulate cost savings in marketing and advertising. So for the defined phase, we wanted to kind of focus in on the case washing machine. This is pretty much the second go around at using the fishbone chart. So we um, singled it out to be case washing machine. So these are all the factors that can be contributing to energy and efficiency in the case washing machine that we've noticed. And at, um, from just, I guess our hypothesis or looking at it, we decided that we were going to focus on the pump and motor as being energy inefficient. So what we did with that, um, we used our Pareto diagrams, which is right here. So we kind of um, based our hypothesis on what we thought was the most important at the time. So as you can see, the pumps, then we figured leaks would be the next thing that was causing energy to be increased. And then next, washing time, operator, and then others that we probably didn't see. And this represents the top 20% factors that are causing 80% of the problem. That's what it means by calculated with the 2080 rule. So moving on to the measure phase, what we use to measure the electricity, uh, we pretty much put one of these clamps on the um, wires for the pump, and it measures um, alternate uh, amps, alternate current, and it records every 125 milliseconds. And um, there's a second portion to it, and once this plugs in, you kind of dial this to either amps, so you can do uh, volts or stuff like that, and it w um, wirelessly downloads data from to your computer, and it, and it collects data for the average, the minimum, and the maximum for every minute. So we collected data for uh, these five dates and uh, Tuesday, Thursdays. So, um, as you can see, the times that we collect the data varies, um, and the averages of the ACCs were very, um, yeah, AACs were pretty close in per week. So, 10.6 and 10.5, that's one week. Uh, that average was pretty close, and that second week, April 1st, April 4th is close, and so it was the data was correlated weekly. And unfortunately, we weren't able to save the data that we collected on Tuesday, April 8th. However, we have some other statistics that we'll mention later in the presentation referring to that day and how it correlated with the 11th. So this is the product that was ran through uh, for each day. And um, as you can see, there were various products ran through the whole entire week. And um, this pretty much shows that the different products didn't really affect the av different averages. All right, <clears throat> this is a um, histogram for over all of the days. So for every day we measured, and then you just have the frequency of the different values so that you can see that it pretty, it's pretty frequent around like 11, between 11, 11 and a half. And, but there are some like outlying values, both high and low, 
but mostly it's right skewed towards the about around 11. All right, and then the next um, five slides are the control charts for the various um, days we we gather data for. And each point is what Sal was talking about with the, how it gives you an average per minute, and that's what that point is, is just every minute is a point. And some have more than others, but um, they, all, they all have like above 100 or something. But and you can see that there's a lot of variation within the control limits, and then there's some without. But those in the control limits, it, it's um, calculated out to where it only, you're only losing about two cents an hour for a variation within one amp, with only one amp here. So as long as the variation is within one amp, for one hour you're losing like two cents this within that variation. So some of the other ones can cost more, but as you can see, it's not a, not a whole lot. And then this is just the second day. And then this is for the first of April. There's a lot more variation, which also you might pay attention to the scale, because I think this one's a little more, the scale is a little more spread out, so it might look like there's a lot more variation when there's really not that much. But it does jump up and down a lot more. And then this one's more consistent. And as I said that you can see that the averages between like the weeks were the same, even though like this one seems a lot more in control than that one we just looked at. But um, the average is still about the same. And then this is the last day that we had data for. This is uh, a graph of the averages for each day by day. And um, the letters represent the statistical difference between the different dates. So as you can see, the first two for this week are statistically the same, and then for the first and the fourth, also the same, and the eleventh being the different, being different from all the others. And then these are the the error bars here are just standard error, and you can also see the correlation between by week here, which is kind of peculiar because it didn't really match up with any of the products that we noticed or anything. Just happened to be weekly. And so we're assuming that probably the eighth would be labeled as an A. It is an assumption, but we are assuming that the eighth would probably be correlated with the eleventh since we're seeing this pattern. And as Tyler and Sai said, both um, from Tuesday and Friday, different products were being produced. So um, there seems to be no correlation between variation due to the product being um, produced that day. And so we, um, as you notice, that the average um, AAC was about 10.7, and the lower control limits were about 10.5, but we set a lower specification limit of 9.5, trying to aim for... So we tried to set a lower specification limit, just aiming to lower that goal of energy use. And we saw that the capability index did, was higher than one, which is a desirable precision, meaning that all the data points are within the same area. However, the accuracy is not desirable, as you can see with the process performance of it being below, um, un, un, under one that they're not meeting that average of 10.7. Um, I'm sorry, they're not meeting the specification limits. They are outside the specification limits. And um, as Tyler mentioned, it's 0 .2, 0 0.23 kilowatt hours per one um, amp variation. So although we're seeing a big variation difference, it seems to not be very costly at this point, just because it is um, two cents per one amp variation. And like I said, the precision is good, although the accuracy may not be. So here's a pump that was used uh, for the case machine. And the average uh, for the motor's usage was 10.7 AAC. And it used 230 vol volts uh, 2,461 watts and 2.46 uh, kilowatts. 
And if you can kind of make out the that plaque is right there on top of the pump, and it says up here. Um, yes, right up here it says that the um, the voltage is between 230 and 460, and then below that it says amps would be between 13 and 6.8. So since we're getting about 11.5, bless you, it seems that the voltage we'd be using is about 230, close to 230, probably about 250. So the pump used was a centrifugal pump and it basically used the rotational energy um, and that's the what the electricity is pretty much used for. And it, it uses the, the water, the force of the water, the kinetic energy of the water and the rotational energy of the pump to pump the water in the opposite direction of gravity. Um, so some problems of centrifugal pumps are the captivation has a net positive suction head of system and it's too low. There's corrosion and overheating due to low flow because the pumps need to be filled to operate. And also leakage along the rotating shaft and surges change acceleration. So some solutions we came up with for improving are, we noticed that the upstream process is about two times as fast as the downstream process, with the downstream process being the packaging machine and the upstream being the crate washer. So we were thinking if a limit switch was installed, it would turn off the machine when the conveyor belt stops from being backed up, or slowing down the washing of crates, or also speeding up the EQ3 machine. And we also were thinking about the automatic soap dispensers instead of manually, and that would save energy, steam, waste, water, wear and tear on the machine and money. And in our um, previous uh, presentation, we were discussing if um, it would be cost effective or inefficient to have the um, limitation installed because if it would cause too much energy to turn on and off the pump. However, we're assuming that because there's, once again, is only that two cent cost for a one amp variation that it would be more cost efficient to turn off the washing machine when there is when the crates do not need to be washed and then just spend that extra money to start back up the pump as opposed to letting all that water consistently leak out. So we calculated the potential savings of turning off the machine half the time that it's being used now to be about $204 every year because right now it's estimated about $409 are spent every year on just the pump and motor itself. And that's paying eight cents for every kilowatt hour used. Other possibilities of improvements were using a 460 volt wire connection instead of the 230 volts. Even though the energy is the same, there would be a lot less copper required and that would be for if you ever decided to get a whole new system. So that would save a lot of money. And also, installing a variable fre frequency drive with the PID control, because then you could control the speed and temperature of the water, and it allows for easy tuning. It can record trends and have better control over the system. So going back to kind of our fishbone diagram at the beginning, these were our hypothesized variable causes, or the hypothesized causes for variation. And so the first thing we were assuming is that the pump itself or the motor was inefficient and that that's why we were suggesting a whole new casing machine, which still would probably be a good idea. However, um, as I said once again, we just discovered that it's not that 
cost and efficient for the pump itself to be varying how it is. So that we kind of ruled that out as a cost effective. Even though it is affecting the variance, it doesn't seem to be costing Howling Cow that much money. And uh, product variance, like we said again, we ruled that out as a cause of variability in the case washing machine or from day-to-day -day production just because we didn't see a statistical difference through our NOVA testing. And then we were thinking that the operators were going to have a effect on the machine, which while I was personally down there um, observing the um, production, and I had the um, handheld device in my hand watching the amps go up and down trying to see when a spike would occur or a drop would occur. And I unfortunately was not able to pinpoint a difference whenever the water was being messed with. And at one point it did overflow and they turned it off completely and it was kind of jumping around, but I did see a spike when the soap was being dispensed. However, unfortunately, our, when we plugged it into our statistical data, we didn't see a difference between when we ran the shift ourselves downstairs with only soap and then versus water, it didn't show a statistical difference between them or a significant difference. So we have unconclusive um, data for the operator. We're still assuming there's an effect, but we weren't able to say that there was a significant difference statistically. So this is our revised Pareto chart from after uh, analyzing our data. And um, a couple of things changed around. We still, these are still the top 20% factors that are affecting 80% of the problem. However, we now believe that washing time is the main effect, just the unnecessary usage of water and the amount and time of water that is being used. And then, what did you say? And the pump being on from that water usage. Yes, exactly. And then um, and then leaks would obviously follow after that with just not concealing the water and once again just wasting water. And then the operator, like I said, we couldn't statistically prove it, but we still believe that the manual control of the water flow and soap dispension plays a big role, at least a bigger role than the pump since it seems that the motor and the pump are efficient within each other, even though the variance is um, shows a lot of um, up and down, but so the pump and motor itself seems to be efficient. So some ideas that we have for um, controlling the system is uh, an operator training program just to kind of go over an optimal water flow or optimal um, soap dispension method. Because while I was um, speaking with the operators themselves, they said that um, they verified that not only was I seeing a difference, but they see the difference themselves between employees and they have to tell people like, make sure you don't turn it past here. Like, And they said they're pretty sure they can find a sweet spot to where if you keep it up there, it won't overflow during most of the production time. And so then they could pay attention elsewhere. And the same with optimal soap uh, dispensing. When I asked them how often they uh, do do it. They just said, like, you know, whatever it seems necessary, but there doesn't seem to be an actual um, implemented solution for that. And then, um, as we said, somehow, or I'm sorry, in the, we collected the records um, from Randy for the, uh, for the operators that were downstairs on the shift to try to do a NOVA testing to see if there was a significant difference between the operators. However, the, um, the only ones that were recorded were the ones working on the EQ3 machine and then the ones in the bag and the boxing area. So we couldn't, it didn't really say who was specifically working on the case washing machine, so we weren't able to prove that there was a difference between the operators. However, if a training system was put in place or just some general rule of thumb of how to deal with soap dispension and water flow, then um, records could be kept and then that could be statistically studied or proven. I think you already covered that. Okay, yeah, it seems like it's yeah. just a repeat. All right. Okay, then of course we want to acknowledge everyone for your help and patience in trying to uh, 
complete this project. It was a very fun e- learning experience, and uh, we hope that we can uh, make a difference at the end of the day or eventually with the control um, plan put in place. Are there any questions? One thing, it, it, it caught me the, the whole uh, undulating pattern we were seeing on some of the amperage. Now, what I, what I will tell you is that the university, I don't know if it's still like that, but in the past, typical voltage variation in the industry is plus or minus 5%. And I know the university for a long time granted the power companies the ability to have as much as 10% plus or minus, which is huge variations in voltage. And they would, we, we sometimes would check 208 voltage and it would be all the way down to 199. As voltage drops, amperage goes up. You, you, you still got to get the same power through. So that could have been actual undulations and voltage supply that you weren't, I don't think you were measuring voltage, you assumed the two it's actually 208, not 230, which actually um, increases what the, uh, the amperage could be over 230. But uh, so, so the, they may be explained just by voltage variations, and uh, we'd have to co-monitor that to confirm whether that was the issue. And that was the desire of our group to use the flukes in six cans measured multiple things. We wanted to hook it up and measure shift with just voltage and see the variation. And that did take place last Friday. However, we weren't able to actually receive that data yet. So um, we weren't able to present it to y'all. So we did base our analysis on assuming constant voltage. However, that is something that we could present in the future or deal with as far as the control phase of the situation. It was interesting you saw a spike during the soap uh, addition because you know, what changes when you put high concentration of soap in there? The luminosity of the water changes. It also, it, you, you notice quickly it foams. Mm-hmm. So now you've got more of a low density water. Uh, if, if it's pump, trying to pump a high concentration of foam all of a sudden, and, uh, and, and motors do something that's called overspeed and it can actually try to overrun the armature and, and, and the, the, the magnetic field, and it can actually cause amperage to jump way up. In fact, you can burn a motor out with over speeds, but with less resistance. So you might have been noticing that, and it just averaged out over the, the way it takes the micro points and it averages, it might just kind of dissipate that. Exactly. And, and this ties into a question I have is, um, if you were shopping around for different detergents to use, different cleaning agents, what physical properties would make this use less energy? Would, would it be surface tension or density or what based on this centrifugal pump? Anti-foaming, so it's not foaming when it gets in there? Because I think having to make the motor go through a pure liquid such as water and then deal with the air bubbles and the foam, I think that's what's caused, I, I'm assuming or guessing that that's what's causing the variation. But th- in reality, we're talking about, we're, we're hitting amps with hammers on, on that because your, your real savings, and I think you, you hit it home, shutting the system down, and, and that couples with the accumulator if we also can accumulate wash cases, then we can shut it down for longer periods of time mm-hmm. and have major, major savings in, in everything, water, soap, energy, all We have time for one or two quick questions. Dr. Joyner, do you have any questions from Idaho? I do, yes. So I noticed in the control charts there was a lot of cycling going on, um, but it wasn't over the entire control chart. So what do you think is causing that cycling or lack of cycling in your data? It might have just been what he was just 
saying about the voltage varying in the from the power company? Well, it's an alternating current, alternating amp and current, so it might just be the alternating, like, I guess, resonance. Is that what causes the magnetic field? If that was the case, then wouldn't the cycling be through the entire control chart? You can see some of the, the data, it actually goes flat in your control chart. Mm -hmm. I think it could possibly be due to what we and that is one thing that I wish we uh, were able to look at is the variability in the voltage. And um, the uh, other thing, we and then we tried to see if it did make a difference when the crates were idle in the machine, if for some reason that would affect the way the pump was working or the amps being used, if it was just sitting there idle but there was no correlation between that either. So um, I guess we're, we're not 100% sure at the moment what's causing that. Okay, well I can tell you that we've seen similar voltage fluctuations in the rheology lab, but it's actually, it's from the power company. Um, so that may be what's doing it. Sometimes it's worse than others, and sometimes it's bad enough to kick our machines offline. Um, because it fluctuates so much. So that could be that. But I was just curious that why sometimes you can actually see those cycles and why sometimes it looks a lot flatter. Um, my second question is that you suggested um, using a 460 volt pump. Um, and so do you have access to 460 volt power? Would you have to run that in? And then um, if you could do that, is there a safety hazard at all um, associated with that higher voltage? Um, the 460-230 voltage is just the way that the pump and motor are wired. So different wiring, you can have either the low voltage or the high voltage. And I'm not really sure about the safety aspect of it. And so the, the copper wire would potentially allow for the 460 voltage. That would be the way to make that plausible. They both, yeah, they both use the copper wire, but with the 460 volts, you can use smaller wires because less pressure is needed for the amps. Corresponding to the wire. Awesome. Well, I, that's all the time we have for questions. One more big round of applause for all three people.